everybody, Nava Hopkins here with a very special Learn with Optimizer. Today, we're going to talk about building the optimizer habit. Now, this might seem like an odd video topic, but it's one of the most common points of friction that we've heard from our customers and then also some of our prospects is that we love what you do, but it's easier to do in Google. Or we love what you do, but like my team is just used to working in the ad platform. We don't want to worry about it. So this is an honest look at what you can do with an optimizer and how to build that optimizer habit. Because candidly, I've been doing digital marketing over 15 years. I am very used to the Google Ads platform. When I have to learn a new tool, it is frustrating, but it is worth it when we are able to get that much more value out of the tool. So we're gonna go through the heavy hitters within Optimizer that I think every single person considering using our tool should know, but also some of the main areas to give yourself grace, because when it comes to learning something new, there are different paths to learning. As a general note about this particular video, we've covered most of these bits in the software in other videos and other tutorials. So this isn't gonna be an in-depth long webinar about the entirety of it. But what we are going to do is highlight areas that we see folks consistently stub their toes and how you can avoid those issues. So without any further ado, let's dive in. The very first thing you want to get comfortable with is our dashboard. Our dashboard has some of the best insights you can possibly get to set yourself up for success. Now, the very first thing that we're going to see is our performance, and that's staple. You, we all should be familiar with that. But what maybe isn't as familiar is the idea of beginning to track our quality score across the account or our Pmax spend distribution what our projected spend is going to be based off of this account and then potentially also across our different portfolio of business. That we have our quick insights, seeing which ideas are getting clicks and impressions. This is incredibly important when it comes to thinking about how Google is shifting to focus on if you don't have impressions, we're not gonna waste the server space on this. Next, we have our PPC Investigator, which we'll spend quite a bit of time on. And then we also have performance change that you can know exactly where to work. Part of why these quick insights are so incredibly important is that when you are working, it can be very easy to go to consistently the same campaigns, the same ad groups, the same parts of the account. And so part of your account gets a lot of love and another part of your account maybe gets neglected. So using the dashboard can really help you understand where to focus, where to work. I'll also point out the change history, the top competitors. Uh, these are some really impactful, impactful ways to analyze your account to know who's coming in the ranks. One thing in particular that's really useful about our top competitors over, say, auction insights within Google Ads uh, or getting that sense of share of voice with Microsoft is that you can see this down to the keyword. So if I want to take a look and see what are those competing keywords, I can then find that out. So it turns out that one of our competitors is bidding consistently on our branded terms. That might be a sign that, hey, we want to be a little bit more aggressive on our competitor campaigns, or it could be a sign that, hey, you know what? We have to play defense with our brand. We may need to budget a little bit more for our branded campaigns, provided that we're getting enough value there. We also may want to take a look, hey, are we being a little bit redundant in our branded campaigns? Uh, the next thing we may want to take a look at is change history. And part of why the change history is so interesting is that it lets you take a look at what changes were made, not just by a human, but automatically. And part of why those auto apply changes are so interesting is that there's a lot of bias around a change from coming from the ad platform being inherently bad. And this is going to give you the data to prove it, or it could give you the data to say, Hey, you know what? That change is totally fine. I'm okay. Letting that run because I have these other protections in place. 
So part of why this change history is so useful is that it lets you check your assumptions, but it also gives you a very candid look at what is happening. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is our PPC account audit. Now, what makes Optimizer so special is that we don't actually force any particular PPC strategy on you. Uh, if you want to run a hundred different campaigns, each with an individual ad group, each with an individual keyword, go for it. If you want to run themed ad groups where you have two to three keyword concepts and five to seven ad groups per campaign, amazing. If you want to run exclusively dynamic search ads and performance max, the world's your oyster. But whatever you set as your rules of engagement, you need to follow and you need to be held accountable for. So when we're thinking about our audits and creating a new audit, part of what is so useful about this, we can decide which resources we actually want to include in our audit and what will factor into our score. So why this is so incredibly important, many tools, including the ad platforms, have an inherent bias on if this is not going exactly the way that we think it should go, you're going to get a bad score and that's going to reflect on your reporting, that's going to reflect in what you send to your clients, what you look at with your team. Optimizer, and this is one of the areas where it's useful to break that habit of the ad platform or the ad tech telling you what to do, it's useful to own what you want. This is where it's really powerful to not only be able to enable that we're looking for a minimum account click through rate, but what should that click through rate be? Now, why that's important is if you're factoring in an account click through rate and you have branded versus not branded, that's going to influence what that minimum click through rate should be. So you'll notice that the default here is five. That's because what we've seen across the board is that an account click through rate of five factoring in branded is absolutely reasonable. But you may say, you know what, my ads get those clicks. We may want to change that to a 8%. And that's totally fair. You might also say, you know what, I'm in e-commerce and I want a 1.5 average click theory. And that's totally fair. It all depends on what ad platforms you are running. And this does factor in what your video campaigns are, what your Pmax campaigns are, so on and so forth. Now, there are a number of different settings here, and I would encourage you to explore the full audit. I will we'll link to resources to explore it in depth. But we're going to move on to our next tool to help build the optimizer habit, which is our blueprints. This is probably the most useful tool to help you understand what to work on. We recently did an in-depth Learn with Optimizer focusing on AI blueprints. This is not going to be a rehash of that, but I do want to point out when we're looking at our blueprints and we look at our pre-builds versus the AI, the pre-built blueprints are very useful for getting a sense of what are the core workflows that the average advertiser is looking at and maybe do I want to adjust those? So for example, if I'm looking at optimized campaigns on automated bidding and I want to configure this blueprint, you'll see that you're able to have PPC investigator, add new keywords, modify target ROAS, modify target CPA, reallocate budgets, and much like any blueprint, you can always adjust that blueprint. You can change the tool. Now it's worth noting that if you ever want to do a custom task, you absolutely can. And one thing I actually like doing for custom tasks is leaving notes for client management. So if I know that a particular client has certain requests or there's certain subtleties and I want to make sure that my team is aware that a thing happened, I'm going to go ahead and leverage a custom task to detail that because the custom task can be go do this thing out of optimizer, but it also can be a note detailing with expectations and in workflows. So that's just an, a useful thing to note there. The next thing we want to take a look at, and this is probably where I think most folks get stuck, is the rule engine. And I get it. 
The rule engine is effectively a blank canvas that is super, super powerful, but it also is super, super time intensive to get set up correctly for the custom interesting things. And that's why as an optimizer customer, you always can ask, hey, can you help me set up an example rule engine solving this problem? Just so that you can have a template that you can then copy to all of your other accounts. What I wanted to uh, show you though, in terms of building in the workflow of rule engine is getting used to using the pre-built strategies as a starting point. Once you get comfortable, Honestly, building from scratch is better because you have a lot more flexibility and there's a lot more kind of interesting things that you can do when you have full unlimited control. But as you're getting used to the rule engine, I definitely encourage starting with the pre-builds. And one of the best ones that you can take a look at is actually taking a look at your high performing search queries. Part of why this is such a useful rule is it will give you a sense of what is the average benchmark of what is considered high performing. And then you can adjust that to your own business. When we take a look at that strategy, we can see that there's a minimum conversion threshold here of three. Now that three comes from looking at the period of time, which is roughly seven days. Uh, it also is looking at how is the CPC and is it in shopping or not. Now it's useful to note that this is inherently a search only campaign. So it's looking at those queries uh, coming from standalone search and is not looking at shopping. In, in addition, it is also taking a look at in the last seven days that you don't actually have those keywords. You'll notice that within Roll Engine, you have the ability to hover and adjust. So say I did want to edit that conversion threshold you can make whatever custom variable you want. So if you want to adjust it, you can. If you want to add a new one, you can. One thing that is important to note about Rule Engine, Rule Engine does not force you to make the change. Rule Engine can tell you that the thing is happening and you can make whatever decision you want about how often you're alerted, or it can in fact make the change. And this is where, when we look at the action, you're going to have that choice of add as a keyword or include in report. Now note that if you decide to add in report, you are going to be alerted about the thing. So it is important to set your settings to confirm how often you want to hear from us and not set every single thing as an alert in the beginning. You want to kind of maybe have three or four ideas running as alerts so that you can get used to seeing what's happening to agree with it. Because eventually the goal should be that you're not putting it in an alert, you're actually running uh, the rule and it's doing the action. If we run this by the default, it is going to default to a manual bid setting. However, most of us are using smart bidding. So I would encourage you if you are going to use this pre-built to actually uncheck set bid because that will automatically just apply the rules of whatever smart bidding you're running at the campaign level or ad group level. So I'm going to click next and you will be set with that rule. Now we've talked quite a bit about what I would consider are the set up moments. And these set up moments candidly should take you somewhere between three to five hours to fully set up across maybe a week or two of giving it 15, 20 minutes a day or every other day. And why that's important to set that expectation is once you do that heavy work of automation and, and giving it the learnings and putting in those protections, you then have much less work to do. If you fall into the trap of doing, I'm going to do this little thing here, this little thing here, this little thing here. I keep going back to the ad platform to do that little thing here, that little thing there, that little thing there. You end up keep having to go back and you end up keep having to do that work and it ends up taking more time. So it all depends on your workflow. If you like doing that, amazing. But if you're looking for a workflow hack to actually get more time back in your day, investing those three to five hours at the beginning will really set you up for success. The next thing we're going to talk about is ad text optimization for RSA. 
Now, why this is an important workflow. When we think about our ad creative, it is very, very easy to set and forget or to go, ah, Google, you're making me deal with these average ad strings or, or what have you. Um, one of the nice things about our tool, when we look at all ads, we can see what the ad strengths are, fewer than six headlines, fewer than three descriptions, no pinned assets, and which ones are pinned, you can then start to see, okay, where might I have to actually invest effort? because when we're thinking about ad creative, for most PPC marketers, the creative is something that we do. It's not what we love. There are some of us that love it. Um, I actually happen to be someone who loves uh, working on creative, but for everyone else that maybe finds it a burden or a struggle, it's nice to have that option. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is the PPC investigator. And part of why this is so special is that you're able to look at root cause analysis. And that root cause analysis is going to give you a much more intelligent view of what is happening and why. So for example, we see that we had effectively flat clicks, but if we were to change this to conversions and we ask it that question, we see that we're dropping quite a bit on conversions. So if we're getting flat clicks, but down on conversions, something is wrong. Like that's really something that we wanna take a look at. And in particular, the fact that branded is not great. And if we remember at the beginning of the video, there were a number of competitors eating into branded, that's a sign that, hey, you know what? I want to bump up my branded campaign. In this case, we would go to our optimized target CPA for ad groups. And part of why we're going to the optimized CPA for ad groups is that we're looking to identify ad groups that we could bump up that CPA. So we're gonna change that default to take a look at our filters. So now that we've adjusted our filters, uh, we now can see, you know what? We maybe need to adjust our CPA. And what's powerful about this is that when we think about CPA, in ROAS. Those are actually very powerful tools to tell the ad platform that we're willing to accept a more expensive lead for volume or willing to accept lower profit for volume. And in this particular case, we would want to say that we're happy to take a more expensive cost per acquisition because our volume is just not great. And what we would do is we would then apply that suggestion. If I were to click apply, it would go right through. We're not gonna do that today, but that is just a way to think about your workflow is that we went from seeing the dashboard, we identified that something was not quite right, we saw a PPC investigator, and then we went into our target CPA to improve those CPAs. Now what happens, like what happened to me, when Optimizer says, you know what? I don't see anything. It's definitely your filters. So I want everyone to get very comfortable with using your filters to really identify, am I being too hoity-toity about my goals? Conversely, am I being too conservative? Do I need to give myself a little bit more grace? Now, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is our engrams. Now, pretty much every ad tech company is going to have some degree of engrams for search. It's because for whatever reason, we as marketers have all have agreed that we love engrams. Part of what makes ours useful is that you can see the count of the queries by each idea, but then you can also see the cost and our conversions. So if you're seeing, for example, that advertising versus ads, ads has a dramatic amount more on count. And we see that our cost was about $1,100, $1,101, but we'll say $1,100. Um, and advertising was $320. It'd be interesting to see what were those actual queries. And if we're seeing Google Ads advertising, pay click advertising, PPC advertising, pay click advertising, for attorneys, 
get paid per click advertising. Like there's a mixed bag here. So it's hit or miss whether we would actually want to go after this idea. If we take a look at ads, we actually see ironically, even though it's a little bit more expensive, we're seeing, in my opinion, a better quality and a better consistency. So these are broader ideas in general. However, they're, they're pretty coherent. Whereas advertising, it was really grab bag. And there was a possibility of people looking even just to get paid to click on ads. So we want to make sure that we're mindful that we're not just looking at cost. We're not just looking at amount. We're actually clicking in and seeing what were those queries. And Optimizer, because we are API based, are able to pull those search terms and provide them directly to you, which sometimes you may not be able to see. Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about with you is the PPC benchmarks. And the PPC benchmarks are one of, in my opinion, the most underrated resources for an advertiser. Now, granted, this is just for Google Ads right now. There are plans to, to look into adding other ad networks. But what's so useful about this is that you're able to see how are you doing against your competitors and against the book of business that Optimizer manages on the whole. We have thousands of ad accounts that range in spends. So it's useful to see how, how do you stack up. We have our CPA on the whole is going uh, down quite a bit, but our conversion rate also went down. So that's not great. Don't, don't get too excited over one metric without looking at the others. Um, but what's also interesting is in looking at average CPC, we ended up in this particular campaign really focusing on low cost CPCs and everyone else went, saw their CPCs rise a little bit. So it's actually interesting to check ourselves that are we going after too cheap traffic? And is that why our conversions have fallen off? So that's just a good benchmarking bit of insight. The other piece that's interesting is that almost all of our uh, campaigns are on maximized conversions. And while it's true that's the majority uh, for uh, the industry as well, it is worth knowing that there are other verticals there. I also think it's very interesting that we have no exact match in this campaign. Optimizer ran the study and we found that exact match really did outperform quite a bit um, against broad, even though broad match has improved quite a bit. But the other thing that's kind of interesting is that it's using phrase match. And phrase match has kind of been on the decline. Most folks agree that phrase match is not very good, um, specifically because you can't opt out of close variance for phrase match. So phrase match and exact match essentially behave the exact same way. And so from a performance standpoint, more and more folks are shifting uh, to exact and broad versus uh, leaving phrase in. Another really interesting insight is the number of active campaigns. Most folks in this vertical have 11 campaigns, whereas this particular account has three. So these are just a couple of interesting insights that you can take a look at um, to help ground you. Now, this is not necessarily something that you're going to want to look at every single day and kind of refresh, refresh, refresh. In fact, once you pick your industry, you have to wait 30 days before you can change it. But it is useful to check in on this every quarter, maybe consider including these insights with your client meetings to help explain why a thing might be happening or why you're taking a certain course of action. So we covered a lot. This was a lot for a learn with Optimizer video. But part of the reason why we went so in depth and why we covered so many things is that at the end of the day, Optimizer does cover quite a bit, but the, the fundamental need and the go do off of this Learn with Optimizer is to build in those three to five hours spaced out over maybe two weeks to really get things set up, build in unmovable uh, blocks in your calendar to get role engine set up, to get account audit set up. Uh, because once you do, you'll find that you end up spending less time managing your accounts because a lot of that work is done for you, um, as opposed to having to constantly go in and oh, I'll just fix it in Google, I'll just fix it in Microsoft, I'll just fix it in Facebook. We are here to provide 
that PPC insurance through automation layering. We are not here to tell you how to manage your account, but a lot of folks that do invest that time, that three to five hours in setup, do end up saving not just time, but money for their clients. So thank you so much for investing quite a bit of time with me. I'm Nava Hopkins, and this has been a Learn With Optimizer, helping you build the optimizer habit. Cheers, guys. Bye.